Hey church family, JT here. Uh, today's day 53, so we're in Psalm 53. Uh, it's actually a pretty sweet day as far as Psalms go because we're going to see actually a throwback of sorts from Psalm 14. Uh, so we're going to see a bunch of similarities between Psalm 53 and Psalm 14. We're going to look at them and then we're also going to look at kind of one of the main differences, which kind of gives us our point for today. So with that, let's get after it. Psalm 53. So here we have Psalm 53. We're going to read through it. It's fairly short. It's only six verses, but uh, afterwards we're going to scroll down and I'm going to actually show you Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 right next to each other so you can see the similarities between the two Psalms. But as you can see the title, there's none who does good, Psalm 53, to the choir master, according to Mahalath, a Moscow of David. Verse 1. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, doing abominable iniquity. There is none who does good. God looks down from heaven on the children of man to see if there are any who understand, who seek after God. They have all fallen away. Together they have become corrupt. There is none who does good, not even one. Have those who work evil no knowledge, who eat up my people as they eat bread, and do not call upon God? There they are in great terror, where there is no terror, for God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. You put them to shame, for God has rejected them. Oh, that salvation for Israel would come out of Zion when God restores the fortunes of his people. Let Jacob rejoice. Let Israel be glad. Now, as we scroll down, you'll see Psalm 14 here on the left. And then as we just read, Psalm 53 over here on the right. And very quickly, you'll notice kind of some of these initial differences are really just the difference of a few word changes, uh, deeds here instead of iniquity, and then um, you'll also notice chapter 14 actually uses uh, the translation of the Lord, which is the divine name throughout chapter 14. And again, it's just translated as the Lord. And then 53, uh, the psalmist actually uses the word Elohim, which we simply translate as God. And all of these differences are really, really minor, uh, minor differences. But it's not really until verse 7 that we really see, um, or rather verse 5, that we really see a difference between the two psalms. So you'll notice here the difference. The first line begins as the same, but then it kind of changes. It says, There they are in great terror, where there is no terror, for God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. You put them to shame, for God has rejected them. Now the psalmist seems to have a republication here in 53 of 14. Commentators agree that the difference here in 53 is that the psalmist seems to be addressing a national crisis that's taking place within the life of the nation of Israel. And, and even more than that, the psalmist seems to be celebrating God's provision for the nation. You see these different, the verb usage here is in past tense. For God scatters the bones of him who encamps against you. You put them to shame, for God has rejected them. So there seems to be a celebratory nature uh, to the psalmist in this Psalm 53. But we don't want to go through the rest of the psalm in regards to its content because we really already have already done that in 14. But rather, I just want to point out the question of why does the psalmist essentially republicate 14 here in 53 with this just minor addition? It seems that what the psalmist is doing is taking the truths that they've already declared about God and just simply recontextualizing it to their current day experience here in 53. There's obviously been many years between 14 and 53, but the truths are still the same. These truths about God, these truths about humanity are still consistent, even given the many years. And they're still applicable to the situation of the psalmist here in 53 with this addition to the national crisis that's taking place. It's encouraging for us because, you know, as we study these psalms right now during this season of quarantine, we can be confident that just as the Psalms are applicable to us now, they're going to be applicable to us two months from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, and so forth. It's because the Holy Spirit comes alongside His Word and continually works in us and through us by His Word in order to change us, perfect us, to speak His truth into us so that we can more reflect the image of Christ in this day, 
and so that we can be encouraged no matter what situation we may find ourselves. Just as the psalmist knew, God's truth will always be consistent and it can always be applied to whatever situation we find ourselves in.